Coming up on today's show, things get heated as Elon Musk tries to reopen Tesla's Fremont production facility, but a solution is worked out. Ford confirms the Mustang Mark E actually charges more quickly than it first predicted, and Tesla is going to be putting its breakthrough million mile battery in its Chinese made Model 3s very soon. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of cleaner, greener, safer, and smarter transportation. I know many of you are slowly returning to normal lives following restrictions lifting concerning the COVID-19. Although we are still in lockdown here, but wherever you are on that journey, I hope that you're staying safe and healthy. Thanks to the Electric Auto Association for their sponsorship of today's show. Find out how to join them and accelerate the switch to electric by going to electricauto.org. We start today with a battle to reopen the Tesla Fremont production facility. As I noted last week, Elon Musk had planned to reopen Tesla's facility last Friday. The county of Alameda, where the facility is located, informed Musk a shelter-in-place order still existed and thus told Tesla it could not reopen. In response, Musk publicly rallied against county officials, threatened to move Tesla's Californian operations to Texas or Nevada, and sued the county of Alameda. Tesla then went ahead with reopening on Wednesday, defining existing orders and earning itself a visit from the local police. The county told CNBC that Tesla itself delayed approval for reopening by not submitting required site-specific reopening and protection plans, did not screen workers for temperatures, and was not requiring mandatory face coverings. Since Tesla has now received approval for reopening, it does suggest these previous issues have now been ironed out. Silicon Valley-based Cruise, the self-driving startup that General Motors has a majority ownership of, has announced an 8% cut to its workforce. According to those familiar with the company, the majority of the jobs being cut will come from Cruise's engineering, recruiting and human resources departments. This suggests that Cruz is seeking to hunker down to weather out the current health pandemic. Although Cruz is not yet officially operating, at least not to a commercial level, the coronavirus has seen a massive drop in interest in all types of ride sharing on autonomous vehicle services, as consumers worry about increased risks of infection. It's not clear at this time if the cut in staff means that GM will hold back on plans to produce Cruz's custom-designed Origin driverless shuttle, but when we have more information on that, we will, of course, share. Before any new car is brought to market, automakers produce significant numbers of prototype vehicles for pre-production, validation and engineering. And electric car startup Lucid is no exception, producing a whole fleet of test Lucid air cars to refine various aspects of the vehicle's various systems. So this week, Lucid showcased some of those 40 pre-production vehicles, or beta prototypes, it's built for the Lucid Air to date. While most of these vehicles would be out and about under normal circumstances, COVID-19 has delayed some of its planned testing. Lucid said it wanted to take advantage of this and share images and videos of its test fleet parked up together. While some outlets have questioned why Lucid's prototypes are wearing body wraps when we already know what the final car will look like, I think it's part of a clever social media campaign to get the car noticed by both car and non-car people alike. Ever since its official reveal last November, we've known a lot about the upcoming 2021 Ford Mustang Mark E, from its target price tag and features to the launch plans for each market. Despite that reveal, however, Ford has been working hard behind the scenes, revising and improving its original vehicle specifications. And now it's announced that the original quoted charging times for the Mark E are slower than the car is managing in the real world. Sharing data from its engineering fleet, Ford says it's now improved charging times for the rear-wheel drive extended range Mustang Mark E. It now can add 61 miles of range in 10 minutes from a high-power CCS quick charging station. That's far better than the previously quoted 47 miles for the same period of time. Volkswagen has announced it's launched its first official storefront for the ID3 electric car, the first one opening in Dresden, Germany. 
Volkswagen says the purpose of the space is to allow potential customers to get to know the ID3, experience one firsthand, and explore a virtual room where they can learn about the ID3. It's not clear from the press release if these storefronts will exist alongside traditional dealerships or if they'll be completely separate entities. But what is clear is that Volkswagen believes, as so many other automakers now do, that electric vehicles require a different dealership model to traditional cars. This is further evidenced by Volkswagen stating that it hopes the storefronts will soon make it possible for customers to order cars online from within the store itself. Harley-Davidson's official figures for the Livewire electric motorcycle are apparently a little on the conservative side. That's according to numerous reports that we've been hearing over the last couple of months. Several YouTubers and several journalists who've put the live wire through its paces say that it can go further and faster. The latest report from Bikes and Beards YouTube channel shows just how pessimistic the figures are. Presenter Sean Kerr borrowed one and he noted that the bike goes five miles per hour faster than its quoted top speed and can manage more than 15 extra miles of range per charge. I should note here though that how you ride, the road conditions and the weather can really impact how far you can go on an electric motorcycle, just like they can in an electric car. The difference? Well, there's a much bigger variation between extremes on the charging range because of physics. Fiat may have only just revealed its all-new 2020 Fiat 500 at the start of the coronavirus pandemic. If you'll remember, it held a virtual launch event rather than the planned auto show reveal. But nevertheless, it's pretty much sold out of the limited edition launch edition of the new 500. Only 500 examples of each limited edition 500 La Prima are available for each European country. But Luca Napolitano, head of EMEA Fiat and Arbath Brands, said that very few are now available because they've all been snapped up. This means in just a few months, around 13,000 Fiat 500Es have been ordered, although deliveries have not yet started. Regular non-launch edition versions of the Fiat 500 will follow soon with a lower price tag. I should also, of course, note that the new Fiat 500 is only available as an electric vehicle. We're still waiting for Tesla to have its upcoming investor battery day, something we've been expecting to take place before the end of this month. At it, we are also expecting to hear about the brand new cell chemistry developed by the Tesla-sponsored Jeff Darn Research Group. That new cobalt-free chemistry is said to be the underlying secret behind Tesla's promised one million mile battery, so-called because it's said to last one million miles. While the details have yet to be discussed by Tesla, you can read the various papers and patents by Dan and his colleagues, we heard this week that Tesla is collaborating with Chinese battery firm Cattle on commercializing that battery with a view to manufacturing and installing it in Chinese market Teslas. Obviously, we'll hear more about this battery at the Tesla Investor Day, so watch this space. And now it's time for short shorts. General Motors has confirmed that despite pushbacks for reveal events of its upcoming Hummer EV and Cadillac Lyric EV, production plans for the same remain on track. Despite COVID-19, the vehicles will launch next year as originally planned. Volvo is said to be working on a new flagship all-electric sedan based off the XC90 SUV. Called the XC100 Recharge, it will be a more sporty, sleek SUV coupe that could go head-to-head -head with cars like the Audi e-tron Sportback and maybe even higher-end cars as well. California breakdown company Atlas Towing has announced a partnership with Spark Charge and Agero to provide mobile rapid charging as part of its roadside assistance programs in the San Francisco and Los Angeles areas. Each unit can deliver up to 17 and a half kilowatts of total power. This week, we heard confirmation that Tesla is now installing updated interior components it designed for the Tesla Model Y into Model 3, including the new USB-C connectors and wireless phone charging. Since the two cars share common interior dimensions, it was a logical change. Kia has been busy this week discussing the new 800 volt battery technology and charging technology that it's been working on alongside Porsche for its vehicles. We've already seen the system in action in the Porsche Taycan, but Kia's upcoming EVs will all feature it, which means that far more affordable vehicles will be able to charge up and move on in super fast time.
Analysts Wood McKenzie says that while EV charging infrastructure deployment in the US currently trails that in Europe, it predicts that the total number of EV charging stations in the US will be on par or exceed those in Europe by 2030. This is all thanks to an expansion in charging deployment in the second half of this decade. In rural areas of the UK, where wealthy lords of the manor still pay gamekeepers to keep their fields and forests full of things to shoot and safe from poachers, Gloucestershire Police has announced it's using electric cars to sneak up on poachers as they try to poach game late at night. Smart could be about to get an electric crossover. According to an interview this week with Autocar, Mercedes-Benz head of research and development says a smart mini SUV could help the brand gain traction in the SUV mad markets around the world. Electrify America has confirmed in parts of the US where it's legally allowed to, it will switch away from a per minute charging model onto a per kilowatt hour charging model. Pricing has not been detailed yet, but do expect tiered pricing based on the power capabilities of your vehicle. Lightyear, the company behind the ultra-efficient Lightyear One, has said it will be working with Dutch company DSM to develop solar vehicle roofs for both the Lightyear One and also other electric vehicles, including cars, vans, buses and even trucks. China has issued three new mandatory standards for electric vehicles that will come into force on January 1st next year. They will focus on EV battery design and reuse, vehicle safeties designed to prevent overcurrent and thermal runaway of the batteries, and electric bus construction. The UK city of York, famous for its tragic Minster fire in the 80s. My late cousin was on the restoration team repairing its prize stained glass windows has said that it wants to become the first UK city to be 100% zero emissions. It wants to ban all internal combustion engine vehicles from city roads as soon as practical. Lexus has announced that its upcoming 248-mile UX 300e electric crossover will get a 10-year, 600,000-mile battery warranty when it launches in Europe and China later this year and Japan early next year. Lexus has zero plans to bring this vehicle to the US. Opal has revealed more teaser images of its upcoming all-electric Mocha E undergoing testing ahead of its launch next year. While we don't know the range yet, Opal is likely to push more details in the coming months, and I'm going to predict a reveal event sometime for November. Opal's partners, Peugeot and Citroen, remember all three brands are now part of the PSA group, have showcased their respective versions of the Opal e Vivaro electric van, the Peugeot e-Expert and Citroen e-Jumpy. All three are expected to go on sale very soon. The clean energy sector has suffered a major setback as the coronavirus has spread around the world. In the US, it's equated to a 17% drop in employment compared to pre-COVID figures. For context, overall US unemployment figures sit somewhere between 14 and 20%, depending on exactly how you calculate them. Steve Huff of Huff Motorsports has set a brand new four-wheel electric drag race record at Tucson Dragway. He pushed his custom all-electric drag car to 201 miles per hour over the quarter mile with a 7.52 second time. Congratulations. Volvo's CEO believes that COVID-19 will increase electric vehicle adoption rates. At a digital conference this week, he stated that he believes EV adoption rates will climb as people favour e-commerce and the benefits of EV ownership over ICE vehicles. Tesla has officially begun producing the long-range rear-wheel drive Model 3 at Giga Shanghai. While that model hasn't been made in the US since last year, it's still proving popular with Chinese customers, hence the continued Shanghai production of the rear-wheel drive Long Range Model 3. The Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, has announced that some of London's busiest streets will be limited to just buses, bicycles and pedestrians as London starts to reopen following COVID-19 closures. Many of the restrictions will be within the square mile, with London Bridge set to ban all private vehicles from crossing it. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. As you might know, if you've been watching this channel for a few weeks, Lordstown Motors has been steadily drip-feeding us information about its upcoming endurance electric pickup truck. 
So far, we've seen snippets of camouflage prototypes undergoing testing, as well as followed the company CEO on a tour of the production facility, where the electric vehicles will be made. This week, we got some more information concerning the in-wheel motors that Lordstown will be using to power its truck. Built in-house, they're going to be built under license from Slovenian firm Elefine, one of the world's leaders in in-wheel technology. And sorry if I have said that incorrectly. My Slovenian is not so good. Production is said to begin in the next six months as part of the pre-production process. And Finally, as we push towards a brave new world of cleaner, greener transportation, many people have questioned why we are still making massive electric vehicles that are basically like the cars we owned before, but with electric drivetrains instead of internal combustion engine ones. Why not go for something smaller instead, especially for commuting? Over the years, we've seen plenty of takes on this idea of smaller vehicles, and I've owned several of them myself. But now a new company from Poland has unveiled the Trigo EV. When it's driving at speed, it, like the Renault Twizy, has outboard wheels that give it stability. And unlike the Twizy, it can lean into corners, which improves its overall handling. But its special trick is extremely clever. It can fold its wheels in traffic, allowing you to filter through traffic like a motorcycle and park in super small spaces. It is amazing. I mean, that is if filtering is allowed where you are. Otherwise, it's just a neat party trick. And on that note, it's the end of this week's show. But before I go, I would like to thank the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring today's news roundup. They have been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967, and they firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean, green electric vehicles today. You can find out how to join, how to become a local EV educator, find local monthly meetups to attend, or find people to talk about making the switch to electric if you haven't yet by going to electricauto.org. I'd also like to tell you about the National E-Mobility Equity Town Hall that EV Noir and Forth are co-hosting on May 28th from 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. The whole conference, which is going to focus on different facets of the e-mobility equity ecosystem, is completely free to attend and it's taking place online via Zoom. If you're interested in an electric vehicle future that's open to all members of your community, then this is a conference you're not going to want to miss out. You'll find the registration link below. We'd love it if you would like, comment and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you feel able, please do consider supporting us using the links below. As you probably know by now, we have cut back our spending quite significantly in order to weather this storm and keep the business afloat, which means that we're getting rid of our old studio in July. But like so many content creators, we are starting to feel the pinch of the impending recession. If you can, we're always grateful for your support in whatever way you can offer it. And that also includes making sure you watch the ads, share our stuff and engage with the channel on social media, because all of that does help with the overall algorithms. Don't forget that we've moved our Take Two Hangouts to midweek. Wednesday seems to be when it's taking place, but you can catch me tomorrow racing in Forza with the rest of the awesome folks at Plugin Racing. Go to pluginracing.com and see the fun and watch me come in last because that's what I've been doing. I'll be back soon with another show very soon. So thanks for watching. Stay healthy, wash your hands, and thanks for putting up with my chickens making strange noises because they're teenage chickens. And as always, Keep evolving.